Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where a two-game road trip for the UConn women's basketball team continues this afternoon off North Broad Street. Inside the Leah Chorus Center, it's UConn in an early season conference matchup against the Temple Owls today, trying to keep their undefeated streak going in the American. And hi, everybody from Philadelphia. Alan Bestwick with Megan Como. So UConn is 2-0 coming into today's game. They won both games by double-digit margins of victory, and yet... After the victory at Vanderbilt Wednesday night, Crystal Dangerfield said it felt like they lost two. Gino said, we got a lot of work to do. Help me understand this. <laughs> yeah, welcome to UConn women's basketball, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, the expectations are pretty high. You know, for a long time, we've seen this team play the game at such a level. They're winning by, you know, 20 and 30, 40 points a game. They make it look easy. But I got to tell you, I've been around a long time, and I remember what it looked like a long time ago in the beginning it wasn't a foregone conclusion that UConn was going to win the game they had to grind it out they had to fight and scrap and claw to win games and I think we're back to that and I think it's better I mean it should be exciting Gino said earlier after five weeks of practice he said you know it's exciting we don't know what to expect we don't know what's going to happen so fans out there who complained about them winning by too much now's your chance <laughs> there you go uh, one of the other things gino said about this season and this squad was that some people were going to have to make big steps forward well certainly through two games one of the players who's done that is megan walker well there's no question about it i mean she's right now in these first two games has doubled up her scoring from last year and make no mistake about it megan walker has always had the ability but she put it in her mind and in her heart that she wanted to step up and make a difference. Physically, she lost 15 pounds, worked hard in that offseason, and I just love the mentality that she's playing with. She's taking the game over, and it's at a perfect time because they need her to step up and be a leader. Uh, Walker and the other Huskies are going to have to step up today because it's a tough Temple squad they're playing. A week ago today, they opened the season with a home win over Cal, hoping for another successful Sunday today in Philadelphia. Tip-off next between UConn and Temple from the Leah Chorus Center. 78-79. Gino Oriema was here in Philadelphia as an assistant coach at St. Joseph's. Gino back in the home area. Philadelphia visiting some family last night. Uh, ever need a restaurant recommendation in this town? He's the guy to go to. And perhaps where to go uh, for a barber? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? Quite a head of hair he had back then, huh? He's thinned out a bit since then. All right, starting lineups being introduced. Let's let us introduce them to you. Today's starting lineups presented by Subaru. Same five as Wednesday night for UConn. Uh, Kristen Dangerfield heading up the uh, attack. Kristen Williams, Anna Makarot getting the start again. Megan Walker and Olivia Nelson Adota. On the uh, Temple side of things, players to watch. The bottom right photo there, Mia Davis who has been just an outstanding player for the Owls and is again having an outstanding start to the season. The uh, unanimous favorite as first team all-conference in the American to start the year. And uh, one of the new entries to this Temple squad, Ashley Jones, who's running point for them as well. Well, Coach Gino getting the squad ready to go. Let's go to Maria Marino now, whose report today is brought to you by Toyota. Maria. Thank you, Alan. Now that a couple games have gone by, I asked Coach Gino Oriema if he has a better idea of where all that production is going to come from now that Nafisa Collier and Katie Lou Samuelson have graduated. And his answer was, uh, not really. Um, there are still a lot of unknowns. Um, in particular, they do need to make more threes, not doing that as effectively. Um, and they also still need to replace some intangibles from those two. They're hoping their freshmen will contribute something which should help a bit, but he said they're nowhere near having it figured out, Alan. Well, the downside to that is they're nowhere near having it figured out. The upside is it's only November. Well, and at this time of year, I mean, it is a process and you've got to, you got to figure it out starting now. You, you don't want to, you're not going to peak now. Huskies in the national flag blue uniforms for the road game. Owls in their white uniforms with the cherry trim and we're underway. UConn controlling the opening tip. Makarot. Inside. Megan. Good feed to the corner. And a three to start the game. Crystal Dangerfield gets the opening points. A terrific kick from inside the lane out to Dangerfield. But Makarov passed up that op open three. When she has confidence, she will shoot that. 
Amani Mayo with a nice running jumper into the lane. Amani Mayo not known as a scorer for this team, but a steady presence. One of the co-captains of the Temple squad. Here's Anna, out to Megan Walker. For three! It does so much for this young UConn team to start two for two. Yes. Handling the ball, Ashley Jones, sophomore from Philadelphia, transfer in after playing her freshman season for West Virginia. She's number zero. She has been a real spark plug for this Temple squad in their opening four games. Owls three and one coming in. Off the rim short from Jones. Terrific box out by Nelson Adota. Another three from the corner for Crystal. That one short. Rebounded Nelson Adota out to Makarot. That one a little strong. Ooh, hard collision on the floor. Megan Walker will pick up the foul there as she went for the rebound. Of course, uh, this is another one of the All in the Family games as far as the uh, Gina Ariama coaching tree. Tanya Cardoza in her 12th year at Temple. Of course, longtime assistant at UConn here at Temple. She's become the all time wins leader in the women's basketball coaching. Very warm embrace between the two before the game when the teams came out of the locker room. Yeah, Tanya will always be a part of that UConn family. Has done an outstanding job here at Temple. Turnover. Marissa Mackins couldn't find a way through the defense. Well, Gino complained coming in, which I know is so unlike him. <laughs> but he did talk about how their defense is not going to be very good, and that's been... A bright spot for his team through two games. Williams, good drive to the bucket for Kristen. What I'm seeing so far, and I know it's early, but a lot of energy from the Huskies. I was just going to say, the, the effort and the energy on offense, moving, they're moving so well with and without the basketball on the offensive end with a purpose. Mia Davis, got it. Chance to go over a thousand points in her career in this game. Williams on the fast break. Got it, and drew the foul. What focus by Kristen Williams, knowing that the defense was stepping in to find a way to get that to go in. You gotta give her credit. Gutsy moves stepping in defensively as well. So the foul called on Marissa Mackins for Temple. And Williams gets the uh, Old school three point play. Nice early advantage for the Huskies. I think it's going to be very important for this UConn team early in this season as they gain maturity to start a game with a lead. Davis high off the glass over a closing Nelson Adoto. Mia Davis. Yeah, the six foot Davis used her body really well to make it impossible for Olivia. Nelson Adota to come block that. Walker, Dangerfield, Makarov. Nelson Adota. Travel. Well, Mia Davis, the junior from Baltimore, has just been phenomenal for this Temple squad. Showing already early in the game that she's going to be a leader for them today. Showing her own strength there. Walker can face up a little bit better, but it wasn't a horribly guarded play. Just a great offensive move. Ashley Jones with the pull-up bucket. Yeah, Davis and Jones, we're going to hear those names a lot today, Alan. Yes, we will. Nelson Adota and Alexa Williamson, a pair of 20s matching up in the paint. That'll be another good physical contest. Makarot drives, cut off at the line, runs into trouble. Tied up ball. The previous possession, when Nelson Adota got called for the walk, Gino Oriema looked at Anna and said, when you pass it into the post, you've got to cut. So they're moving much better today. But of course, he's always going to yell those reminders. Around it out for Mackins. It's cut off by Jones. Here's Megan Walker. Williamson 
Walker, such a solid start to the season for the Huskies. Dangerfield with seven to shoot. Got it. That's three. Crystal red hot to start the day today. When you're taking the right shots because everyone's moving and they're firing the ball around. Now, it was probably going to go out of bounds <laughs> off Temple, but... Gino grabs his head going, oh my gosh. You know, it's too hard. It's, it's, it's tough to yell at a kid for hustling. Yes. But you got to hustle smart. And that was thrown at, almost out of bounds by Temple by Walker diving, or Williams rather diving. Well, now it's still Temple ball. First sub of the game made by Temple. Asana Alexander comes into the game. Ronnie Mayo goes out. Alexander, one of the freshmen who's been contributing right away for the Owls. From the corner, this is Mackins. Too strong, rebound Walker. Huskies run. And now Dangerfield will slow it down and get into the set. Megan Walker for three. Got it. The rangefinder working today so far for UConn. Well, we said this in the Cal game last Sunday. They got good shots. They just didn't drop. Yeah. The difference today, which you wouldn't think on the road, is the shots are going in. Well, they're going in for Temple, too. Yeah, Mia Davis again. Mia Davis and Crystal Dangerfield were the two unanimous picks to the preseason all-conference team in the American as voted by the coaches. Williams off the mark. Nelson Adota, strong rebound. Here's Dangerfield. Another three. She is dialed in in Philly. Crystal three for four, all from three-point range today. Nine points early in the going. Good help. Dangerfield feeds Williams. Got it to go. Timeout called by Tanya Cardoza as UConn has gone on a little bit of a run and opened up a 10-point lead. Back in Philadelphia, the Leah Chorus Center, UConn opening up a quick 10-point lead on the Temple Owls. And most of the damage has been done from long range. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a good sign for Gino Oriama when his senior Crystal Dangerfield comes out hot and Walker, two for two from behind the arc. Dangerfield with one of her three threes thus far this game. It just changes their mentality when they shoot so well early. Through the opening couple of games, UConn only shooting 29% from three point, And here they're 62.5% so far in the game. I mean, we all kind of had a sense that they're not, that that three point shooting percentage was not reflective of the type of shooting yeah. team that they are. And Gino knew that, and it was just a matter of time before they went in. But I'll also tell you that they weren't taking the shots at the right times in, in a couple in those two games. So the, this is a very different ball game so far. Ashley Jones with a bucket. And obviously also the concentrated effort from long range, something they saw on film in Scouting Temple and they thought they could exploit today. Brought into Nelson Adota. The spin, the bucket, and a foul. Nelson Adota looks better in that low post to me today than she did even Wednesday at Vanderbilt. Just knowing what she wants to do when she gets the ball, turning hard, get, and, and showing her upper body strength, which obviously she needs to get stronger, but getting her right arm bumped as she's shooting it and, and still making it, that shows progress. 11-point lead for the Huskies, Maria. Yes, Alan, uh, just in that last time out, Coach Oriema started off the huddle, focusing on help defense and communication with who's rotating over to help who. And interestingly, before the game, when I spoke to Crystal Dangerfield and asked her how did she think her team was going to get going more offensively, she had said creating offense from defense, and they want to do more in transition. Well, good energy. And a couple of good run-out buckets as well for UConn in this opening stretch of the game. There's a feed to Makarot. Again, that's a shot she will take. Nelson Adota got the bucket. Good feed. That's something we saw from Makarot on the Vanderbilt game where she has a good vision and the ability to drop those nice little touch passes. Yeah, great in tight basketball places. IQ. You're absolutely right. She sees the plays happening before they happen. 
Good communication defensively. They just, UConn just switched. Temple does a good job of moving. Shot from the corner way off the mark by Asana Alexander. Here come the Huskies. Makarat with the pull-up three. Off the front rim. Jones takes it all the way the other way. Ashley Jones came back home, spent her freshman season at West Virginia, sat out a year ago. Tanya Cardoza expecting really big things from Jones this year, and so far through four games, she has gotten it. And you know, Temple did have a disappointing year last year, being 11 and 19, but they were decimated by injuries. Nelson Adono with a nice touch from beyond the free throw line. That changes the game for UConn with Nelson Adota. I mean, God, it just shows you how good she's gonna be down the road at 6-5. She continues to increase her range. She will be unstoppable. Shot off the mark from the corner. Mia Davis in for the rebound, fights her way through to the bucket. Mia Davis has been a force for Temple in the early going. Well, she averages 10 rebounds a game. She gets on the glass. Megan Walker will be called for taking steps. She was almost too open there. <laughs> but when you look, okay, now where's Nelson Adota, right? Here she is. Now, there we go. Go ahead. Watch her drive and then finds her. She knew she had spotted her. Makarad had spotted her early in the play and then drove into that lane, drew the defense, and dumped the pass. So Huskies by 11. Shannon Atkinson blocked by Nelson Adota, but Olivia couldn't corral the rebound. It goes out of bounds off UConn. 14 to shoot for the Owls. Good use of the body and good footwork and just blocked that shot. Nearly came down with it, but didn't come down to get herself in foul trouble. She doesn't want to go sit next to that guy on the bench. Mackins from the corner for three. Marissa Mackins, the sophomore from Durham, North Carolina. She's their, one of their best three-point shooters, if not the best yeah, she's for Temple. Th she's third in the nation in three-point attempts. Certainly not shy. Nope. <laughs> well, when you can make them. That's right. Just a little bit off the mark for Megan Walker. Nice job boxing out by the Owls. UConn lead down to eight. Half a minute to go in this opening quarter. Going to be a foul on... Uh, Five-second call. Five it was second a little call, bit of sorry. a late whistle. Yeah. A little bit of a late whistle by Jeffrey Smith. I think it was the right one. So 28 seconds to go in this opening quarter. Shot clock is off. And the Huskies will get a chance for the last possession and a chance to try and drive this lead These back are, up to 10 or higher. This is a good example of a play that will mean more to this current UConn team than perhaps those of recent memory. This will show that they can execute when they need to. This will be a little burst of confidence for them. Williams for three. And the deep ball continues to go. <laughs> Ashley Jones from just across the center court line off the rim. And so the end of one here in Philadelphia. A good start for the Huskies. 60% shooting from three-point land. One, UConn over Temple after the first quarter. Megan, you talked about that last play with the shot clock off being key. What'd you see? Well, here, check this out. Now here, Marissa Mackins is guarding danger, uh, Kristen Williams out there in the corner, okay? She's way in the lane, helping out weak side. Well, she goes out. Makarat does a great Defenders are guarding Makarat down there, and what does that mean? Okay, that means Kristen Williams is wide open for the three. That's that's what happens. It makes the defense make mistakes. So the Huskies, 60% from three-point land. Kristen Williams with 10, the leading. Nine. Olivia Nelson Adota with seven. Megan Walker with six. On the Temple side of the ledger, it's Mia Davis who has 10, which is uh, just one point less than the entire rest of the team combined through one quarter. So Huskies open the second with an 11 point gap. There's just a different pep in UConn's step today, wouldn't you say, Alan? I very much have seen a lot of energy right from the start. Dangerfield. Oh, look at the ball movement here. 
tend to shoot. Anna Makarot just can't get that shot to go. Olivia Nelson Adoto with the rebound and draws the foul. I say this for Makarot. When we were at practice <laughs> before the season, what's the first thing I said to you about her? That girl can shoot the lights out of the gym <laughs> from anywhere. Absolutely. When she gets a couple of those shots to go, watch out. That's right. And, and it's going to happen. But the, the key to good basketball players is when you're not scoring, how do you find your way to make an impact? And Makarot has proven that she's a terrific passer. And I just think she's got to, even though she's struggling with her confidence with her shooting, she's she's attacking she's uh, there's a different energy about her here today and it's going to continue to improve just more confidence uh, in where she's supposed to be when i think she got a little overwhelmed as the season started gino talked it, about it, that this is a, a tough place to play no question about it it's mentally exhausting but there's no question when a couple of those shots start to fall look out because she can shoot the ball from anywhere she absolutely can Nelson Adota from outside. Cruel bounce. <laughs> She's creeping out towards that three-point line. Gina wants to see her down in that low post. Good screen by Mia Davis. Yeah, good screen, not great communication defensively. Kristen Williams with good anticipation. And good avoidance of the back checking Renaya Walker. <laughs> and how about the lefty? Kristen Williams chooses to go right to use her right hand. Perfect. Kristen up to 12 now, leading scorer in the game. Davis off the mark. Third chance finally goes down. Lena Neon. Graduate student from Dakar, Senegal, into the ball game. Number one for Temple, Makarot. Just can't find the range yet. Leon, back iron, Makarot, the rebound. Off Yukon, no foul called. Wow. And so the ball will go over to Temple. Mm -hmm. It all starts on the defensive end there. Hands up in the passing lane. Good anticipation. Didn't get phased by the Temple defender flying through. Good focus. Good finish. Still a 13-point gap for the Huskies. Jones. Walker. Alexander from the corner. That's a three. Asana Alexander, the freshman from Prospect Park, New Jersey, which is just across the river next door to Trenton. Another one of those young players. She's 10th in the nation in assists is Alexander for Temple. Nelson Adota fighting against Neon. Too strong, Neon with the rebound. As she gets bigger and stronger and more mature, Nelson Adota will turn and not fade away but go into the defense, draw the foul, and get the three-point play. Jones too strong. Had to alter the shot by the rising defense. A good help defense by the team in blue. Andrew Griffin into the game. He's gonna draw the foul as she goes to the bucket. So Griffin, who's played uh, 19 minutes against Cal, 0 for 1 from the floor, uh, got a single point on a free throw against the Vanderbilt Wednesday night, 18 minutes, got four points, two of five from the floor, but contributed five rebounds and four steals. We're gonna see a continual ascension with this kid because she is so gifted, she is so athletic, she has a nose for the ball, and she's just relentless. And she's going to do the things that some of her teammates, you know, she knows she's not out there to score. She's going to go out there and do everything else. And in, as a result, she'll probably end up eight points, ten rebounds a game. Ten points, ten rebounds. I could see that being Griffin's role. As a freshman, you'd be happy with that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Ecstatic. Bites through the screen. 
Alexander from the corner. There was a lack of communication defensively there. And that's what freed up Alexander. So hit a three long ball from the baseline near side, then just hit one from the far side. Nine point lead for the Huskies. Megan Walker, front rim. Here's Davis. No. Rebound Griffin. Davis four points away from that thousand career point mark. Inside, Nelson Madonna. Travel. So that previous possession, Alan, I was talking about the defense. Lack of communication. See there, we didn't see all of it, but coming from the other side, it, UConn has done a good job, and Gino loves when his team talks. They didn't talk enough defensively. You can pass off a defender and, and or an offensive player, but but once you pass off a second person, you got to make sure you talk. They didn't talk enough. Thrown away. Leon tried to feed it back outside as she saw some defense waiting for her in the paint. And so the ball over to the Huskies. 5.22 to go in this second quarter. UConn riding strong three-point shooting to open up a gap in this one that hangs at nine. Nelson Adota looking again. Dangerfield off the Nelson Adota screen. Off the mark. Griffin fighting for the rebound inside. Keeps it alive. Still won't fall. How about fourth <laughs> chance points? My goodness, as much as Gina must be exasperated. Imagine Tanya Cardoza <laughs> saying, we're giving up four offensive rebounds? Good Lord. And that was some one of the things the other night in the Vanderbilt game that was kind of troubling for the Huskies is some under-the-bucket layups <laughs> that just didn't go in. Leon off the mark. Williams with the rebound. Find herself in some trouble. Three owls, and she gets away from it with numbers. Walker to Dangerfield. Too long. Nelson Adota gets the rebound. Fighting hard inside. That won't go. Gets another one. And that gets knocked away. Draws a foul. Good action under the basket by UConn in the offensive end. Drawing some free throws. One, two, three, four. The fourth time is the charm, isn't it? Real same <laughs> time coming up. Join Gary Apple and Kara Walters for first half highlights and analysis. And here, Kristen Williams look back on her freshman season on the UConn Women's Basketball Halftime Show. It's presented by Ford, 414 of playing time away. Well, after starting off pretty red hot, especially from long range, the Husky shooting has cooled off in this last stretch. One of their last nine now have gone. Well, and, and what did Gino say yesterday? You know, it's not always pretty, but it's got to be gritty. Yeah. And right now we saw in that last offensive possession with four rebounding, it's offensive rebound attempts. You know what? You just got to be gritty, be tough. And sometimes, sometimes the shots won't drop, but the work ethic can never, never waver. Olivia Nelson Adota now five for five from the free throw line, drawing the contact and making him pay. By the way, has not drawn a foul herself yet, not been called for a foul. Played with four and three fouls in each of the opening two games. Alexander shot blocked by Olivia. Her timing is really good. She always sees the ball. I mean, look at that. The nice stepping over, and she's far enough away from the offensive player and is going knock, yeah. straight up. That's the key. Right? We've seen a couple times this season where the arms come forward and that's gonna get you called for the foul every time. Jones too strong, offensive rebound and blocked again. That was Nelson Adota. She's everywhere. Kristen Williams on the bench for a spell. So both Makarot and Griffin in the game at the same time for UConn here. Inside to Olivia. Good block. Alexa Williamson with the ball. Owls run. Jones will draw the foul at the other end. All 
I don't know if Gino's trying to say there was a foul on the other end. Like, you're, gonna, you're not going to call that, yet on this end, you're going to call this. Oh, yeah, she reached in and hit her. So he's saying down the other end, you see the foul down there, call it. <laughs> you can read lips that well. <laughs> You've been doing this for a while. Certainly that guy. So Jones with the uh, free throws gets her up to seven points in the game. Second leading scorer behind Mia Davis for Temple. 12 point Husky lead. Three to go in this second quarter. Interesting experiment here with both the freshmen on the court at the same time, huh? Got to start sometime, right? Five to shoot. Dangerfield with the step back side of the rim, side of the yeah, backboard rather, and that'll go as a shot clock violation and a turnover. Got to give Temple credit. Really good half court defense. This Owls team, they, they had a down year last year, but and they're picked to finish sixth in the American in the preseason poll. But you think they're going to be tough? Yeah, I think they're going to finish above sixth. Uh, again, they were decimated by injuries, and, and they worked hard in the offseason as we got a jump ball here. That'll go. They'll go to the Owls. Stay up to date with UConn Athletics by following the UConn Huskies on all your favorite social media platforms. Use the hashtag UConn Nation to interact with UConn fans across the globe. That's what I left out of my pregame tweet. The hashtag <laughs> just dawned on me. You, you and I are hopeless. Uh, so 20 to shoot here for the Owls. Jones tried to feed the ball inside. Kristen Williams back on the floor. And that'll be turned over as Shante Taylor tried to spin around in the paint and had no place to go. Tremendous half-court defense, and it was good team defense. Gino's got to be really happy with what he saw. I mean, Olivia nelson Adota bo bodying up, right, being tough. But then the help coming down from Dangerfield over there from Williams. Really good help defense. Two minutes to go. Side, Nelson Adota. Oh, what a nice touch. Again, she's still fading away. Yet, you know, it's kind of hard to argue when the ball goes in. For sure. 13 now. And the high scorer for UConn is uh, Nelson Adota. Jones tries to feed it through. Good defense again. The Huskies with a chance to add on to the 14 point lead. Danger field in trouble. And that's going to be a tied up ball. That'll stay with UConn. 20 to shoot. Crystal knows better than to get herself stuck down in that situation. Megan Walker's going to get yeah, calls sure for taking are. a step too many. A lot of walk calls we've seen here in this yeah. first half. Two or three on UConn. Seventh turnover for the Huskies. Seven for Temple also. Ashley Jones handling the ball. Three of nine from the floor. 0 for four from three-point range. Four rebounds, two assists. She'll go into Davis. That won't roll. It's going to be a foul as uh, Shantae Taylor got her hands up. Trying to get a hand on the ball. I think she clipped uh, Megan Walker on the nose. Yeah, a little too aggressive. <laughs> Megan's trying to say, wait, am I bleeding? Tanya Cardoza. 14 years at UConn. 1995 to 2008. Nelson Adota's had a half to open this ball game. Here's Dangerfield. Right hand floater. A little bit slow to get up. 
Shot too strong. That's going to go off Megan Walker and stay with Temple. 20 on the shot clock. 26.8 to go in this quarter. So, Molly Bent will come into the game for Crystal Dangerfield. An opportunity to get Crystal an extra moment's rest yeah, in the halftime break. Yeah, a little bit break. helps, right? And you got to know, number five just came in. You would think Temple would want to get her the ball and take the last shot. That did not happen. Inside of 20 to go. Bent now, who was awfully good from three-point range, 50% from three last season, has the ball here. Inside of 10 to go. Makarat going to put it up from three. That just won't go. What a box out. And that is how the first half is going to end. Hot start for the Huskies gets them out to an early lead. Temple made a little bit of a rally as UConn went cold, but then the Huskies gritting it out, to borrow yeah. your phrase, and Gino's <laughs> phrase. And uh, we'll go to the break with a 16-point lead. Our Gino halftime interview presented by Genius 3D Mimography. Here's Maria. Thank you, Alan. Uh, Coach, good ball movement to start the game. What did you like on offense, and what do you need to clean up? I thought our offense has been great. I mean, hell, we got 46 points. Uh, and our defense has been really good the last six or seven minutes. Um, you know, we just we got 46 points. I don't think Megan has scored yet, you know. And I, uh, so I think in the second half when we get everybody involved, uh, they're not an easy team to defend, as you can see. Every time they get an open three, it goes in. But I like the way we're playing right now. All right, Coach, thank you. And UConn is leading Temple 46 More to come. We had Gary Apple and Carol Walters in our halftime show after the break. Stay with us. Report brought to you by our local Ford stores. Gary Apple sitting alongside Carol Walters. Connecticut coming out, looking to go to 3-0 on the season. They really shared the basketball really well in that first half. 11 assists on their 16 made baskets. Yeah, this is the best I've seen. I mean, clearly it's only the third game right. here. But uh, <laughs> they, they've... They came out with an energy and a presence about them, and I think they, they've known they've struggled a little bit in the half-court set. And passing the ball, really, the ball movement, the spacing of the floor, the quick way they're moving the basketball led to a lot of passes. And I think the way Olivia Nelson Adota is moving on the inside, a lot of cuts if you watch them, a lot of screens, a lot of cuts, a lot of back doors. So there's always a lot of movement, and that's leading to somebody being open. And clearly we know this UConn team, as of UConn teams in the past, very unselfish the way they're sharing the ball and getting a lot of opportunities because there's a lot of movement. You met, mentioned Olivia Nelson Adota. Yeah. She had a tremendous first half. We spoke a lot about her on our pregame show. 13 points, eight rebounds, and four block shots in that first half. UConn leads it by 16 at the break. Much more to come here from New York City. UConn down the turnpike leads it big at the half. Karen and I back in a moment. You buy your local Ford stores. Connecticut leading at 46-30 at the break. They shot 47 percent in that first half and 43 percent from beyond the arc and route to the 16 point lead going to take a look at the second half and Kristen Williams when we come back in a moment the UConn women's halftime report. now Kristen Williams first half is presented by Town Fair Tire and we recently caught up with Kristen and she shared with us what she learned from her freshman season take a listen it was a struggle at the beginning um, I kind of hit a wall um, towards the middle of the season, but with the help of my teammates and coaching staff, like they they helped me. Um, I feel like I evolved a lot as far as offense and defense, but I really struggled defensively last year. You know, in high school, you never really had to play defense, so this was all new to me. So I had a lot to learn, and I feel like that evolved over the season. I love that. In high school, <laughs> never really had to play deep, What's defense. defense. What's defense? By the way, she had a really strong first half. She had 12 points on five of six shooting. What impressed you the most about her? <laughs> defense. I just, I just love it. She's a team player, that's for sure. Her defense has come a long way. There were some miscommunications in the first half, but I love that she's doing things from all over the court. She's cutting to the basket. She's shooting from the outside. She's not tentative at all. And you can just see her confidence has been raised to another level that she's getting it done on all areas of the court. I loved on that fast break. This one right here. She's a natural lefty, but she goes to the right side to avoid the block and she gets the bucket right there. And her defense UConn. is going to lead to a lot of offense this season because she's worked on that defense that she didn't know she had to play. Defense. It's leading to a lot of offense in college. UConn by 16 at the break. Karen and I will see you back on the postgame 
post-game show second half following a short timeout. North, North Broad Street in Philadelphia. For some Husky fans who made the trip down I-95, the Yukon Huskies leading the Temple Owls by 16 points, causing a happy dance at parts of the Lee Forest Center. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Alan Bestwick, Megan Kulmo. Glad to have you back with us. Uh, so the game for the Huskies to this point started out red hot from the outside. Then the action moved inside. Then the action got a little chilly. <laughs> yes, it did. So, you know, when Gino talks about it, it's exciting to not know what he's going to find every game, you know, that doesn't make the coach too excited or too happy. But focusing on the good place, the great kick inside the lane out to Dangerfield, and then Dangerfield returning the favor to Megan Walker. Kristen Williams getting involved from long range. They found a lot of success going inside to Olivia Nelson Odota. There, four of her 13 points. It's impressive the lead that they have, and Megan Walker only has six points and has only taken four shots. Yeah, and the other part about the cold, to tie that in, we had the outside, we had the inside. Well, then in the second quarter, the shooting went cold for the Huskies. They shot 70% from the floor and 60% from three in the first quarter. Second quarter, 23% from the floor and 0% from three in the second. And, and that's what makes coaches sort of scratch their head and say, okay, how can we come out and play so great? And then what happened in that second quarter? This is the time of year where that stuff is gonna happen. And you gotta figure it out and correct it. Shot off the mark from Davis to start the opening possession of this second half. Here come the Huskies looking to build on their 16 point advantage. Largest lead of the game. They took into the locker room at halftime. Same starting five on the floor that began the game for the Huskies. Here's Kristen Williams. That's a little too strong. Rebound Ashley Jones for the Owls. Davis will draw the foul. Can't get the bucket to go. That'll be Crystal Dangerfield who will pick up the contact. Well, when the Temple players came back onto the floor from their locker room, boy, there were a bunch of long faces and no energy. So either they got a real talking to at halftime from Tanya Cardoza, or they're, uh, they're realizing the mountain they face and trying to dig out of a 16-point gap. But, you know, it's one possession at a time. UConn misses the three, and now they run it up the floor to the delight of their coach, even though Shatani doesn't look very delighted right there. But get, you know, get the foul on Dangerfield, get to the free throw line. That's some good stuff for Temple. I mean, this game is well within their reach. They won a 17-0 run the other night against Xavier. Yes. And they've shown a couple times they can in their opening score four games. in bunches. They are an incredibly dangerous team. Shot clock at 10. Armbar going to be called. Foul will be on Alexa Williamson, I believe. Yep, it will be. So her first foul and. Uh, 20 goes back on the shot clock as Makarot looks to inbound the ball for the Huskies. Gets it to Williams off the Nelson Adota screen. The shot a little long. Good offensive rebound by Olivia. And it was a good offensive rebound because it was tremendous hustle by Nelson Adota. She just wanted that ball more than anybody else. Megan Walker. Back iron. You know, it didn't go in. More good hustle offensively by the Huskies. Didn't even look to take that shot. But that shot Walker took wasn't necessarily the best shot in the flow of the offense. And to shoot, and that's going to be an offensive foul on Makarot with the push off. It's a good call. She did watch that with the, yeah, she, I mean, a little acting there by Mayo. They give awards for acting. <laughs> In this case, rewarded with the ball. But yes, a good foul call. Here's Davis. No. Makarot with the rebound on the defensive side. There's Dangerfield. She'll transition to the near side of the court. Williams on the great pass for Makarot. And that's, to me, that's why that shot went in. Because it was a terrific pass. The penetration made the defense collapse into the lane to follow the ball. And Williams wide open. 17 points, the Husky advantage. That one goes, Ashley Jones from outside. 
Nine points now. And the foul going to call be called again on Alexa Williamson, who bodied Nelson Adota. Look at the spacing. The one player inside, the skip pass always messes up the defense. And then the dribble penetration drew the defense in. And another another great pass from Makarot. Now, mentioned earlier, had a great game the other night with five assists, team high at Vanderbilt. That'll rattle around and in for Megan Walker. I would think there would be a focus here to make sure Megan Walker for UConn gets lots of shots on the offensive end. Three of six from the floor for Megan, two of three from long range. Crystal Dangerfield is going to pick up the foul. As you look at Kyla Irwin, the senior from State College, Pennsylvania, who has her own personal cheering section here today. Check it out. Her mom and dad, Bethany and Rob, right there. They had a, they had dinner last night at Kyla's uncle's house. Gosh, I don't even know how many people were there. <laughs> a lot. Shot off the mark, and Walker with the defensive rebound. Nothing like a home cooked meal on the road. Ah, isn't it great? Foul there, that is going to be on Davis with the contact. Temple's a tough defensive team. They bump, they hit. They're, they're savvy. Foul, there's a foul in there right now. Ten to shoot. Makarot. He was trying to get her the ball. He was coaching that that entire possession, trying to get Makarot the shot. Jones with the wild running shot. Makarot with the rebound, knocks it off a Temple player out of bounds, and it's UConn's ball. Fortuitous UConn bounce, surprising, I would say. Temple, one of its last 14 from the floor. Huskies, who started the game so hot from outside the arc, just one of their last eight. And there's a basket for Makarot on a great cut and a great pass. Really pretty offensive sequence there. The nice back cut from Makarot. And what we've seen already this year, Nelson Adota with a nifty high, court, uh, high post pass. First points of the game for Anna. Another good defensive stand for the Huskies. Here comes Kristen Williams. They gotta keep moving. You see a lot of blue jerseys standing right now. Shot off the mark for Nelson Adota. Another example of why that shot didn't go in. Yep. Because they were just standing around. Jones to Davis. Shot from the corner by Asana Alexander and a timeout taken by Temple. Tanya Cardoza looking to sort things out. <laughs> the big shrug from Gino to Anna Makaran, who just made the bucket for the Huskies. Halfway through this third quarter here in Philadelphia at Temple, it's all in the details, right? How to defend, how to score. Absolutely, and how to tie your shoes. Now, see here. <laughs> We got right there, she's tying her shoes, okay? So now the ball is on the right side of the floor. Okay, now watch. Now when the ball's over here, you see Makarat is kind of in the lane, okay? Now she's coming out, okay? Now there's Megan Walker right here. Now she, Megan Walker is supposed to get out there, but she doesn't. Now we weren't sure, because when they went to the bench, Makarat was looking at Gino and he's like, whoa, what are you doing, right? Like, what's going on? There was some sort of a lack of communication there. Yeah. Was she lulled to sleep? Because she thought, well, my <laughs> guy's shoe, tying his shoe, shoes, so <laughs> don't worry about it. That was Asana Alexander, the freshman, who um, calmly repaired the shoelace and dropped the, dropped the bucket from the corner. Go figure. <laughs> Whatever works, right? Okay. So Husky's ball here as uh, Crystal Dangerfield brings it up court. Williams leading scorer for the Huskies so far, 15 points on six of nine shooting. Defense, 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 
Walker, 10 to shoot. Nelson Adoto sets the screen. Dangerfield couldn't drain the shot. Rebound gets tapped out to Temple. Here's Ashley Jones running the floor. Alexander, shoelaces tied this time. <laughs> Walker, three, another one of the freshmen in the game for Temple. Six to shoot. Jones caught. Makarot steps in, makes the block, and turns that into a shot clock violation. And a turnover goes to the Huskies. Four and a half to go, third quarter. UConn. Looking to keep its undefeated streak in the o'clock. Tickets start at just $5 at tickets.yukonhuskies.com. Yo, Adrian, be there. <laughs> I had to say it. So uh, the unusual early opening to conference play for the Huskies this year made because they wanted to make room in the schedule to play that exhibition against the U.S. national team. So the Huskies, in their final season of play in the American, trying to remain undefeated all time, all the way through the conference. Look at that middle bullet point. 119 of the 120 conference games have been decided by a double-digit margin. And, and how about they've averaged 40-point wins? Yeah. Like, that's, that's not normal. Incredible. It is incredible. And I ask you now, being undefeated in conference play and coming to this year's team as you wind out the final year in the conference, if that adds pressure in some way to the players. You don't want to be the one to break the streak, do you? I, I wouldn't think so. I mean, I don't know how much the kids talk about it, but I know the fans do. Nice feed from Makarov to Megan Walker. And we see another good pass from Makarov. She'll gain confidence contributing in the assist category. Her shots will fall haven't seen the same rotation between her and Aubrey Griffin as we've seen in the opening two games. A lot more Makarot today. And I was curious and said to you in the break that I wondered if that was Gino just really trying to work on a hard. Yeah, just to kind of get her through this slump. It's a very good point. Davis, that just won't go. Defended well. Makarot with the save. Huskies ball. Yeah, Aubrey Griffin has played 19 and 18 minutes in the opening two games, has appeared for five in this one. And I would think this would be a really good matchup game for her. Williams off the back of the iron. For Griffin. Correct, yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, I thought this would be a really good game for Griffin. She matches up well. These Temple kids are equally as, as athletic as she is. Mia Davis. And that will put her over 1,000 points in her career, the third fastest in program history to get to 1,000 points. You know what, what that's like, yeah. that 1,000-point <laughs> mark. Was it a special thing for you when you got there? God, it was so long ago, I can't even <laughs> remember. I do remember, you remember who it's against. Mine was at Syracuse. It's nice for, for Davis. It's here at home. It's against UConn. That's, that's great for that kid. She's had a tremendous career. Averages a double-double. It's tied for first in the nation in double-doubles in this young season so far. I think that was Davis, too. They just picked up that foul. Yes, her third. Check that. Her, her first. Round and out for Crystal. Nelson Adoto with the foul as Alexa Williamson tried to go to the bucket. Check that, that was Shante Taylor who went to the bucket. So that is the first foul in the game on Olivia. Crystal Dangerfield with three, Megan with one, and Anna with one. So just six fouls in the whole game by the Huskies. Yeah, it's been a well-defended game in terms of just not a lot of sloppy fouls. I think we could also say there's a good officiating crew here. Polani Sporlock, Jeffrey Smith, and Rod Creech. So a 14-point gap. As we come down to two minutes to go in this third quarter. 
Wilson, the Dota gets contact in the paint. No foul called. Thought Raniah Walker got her coming over with the shoulder, there but was that some one was contact. not there. Yeah, but when you fade away like that, the ref is less likely to give you the call. Tried to feed inside into traffic to Davis, and that goes out of bounds. So first of all, the kid was way too high on the high side. A little bit of, you know what? There really wasn't that much contact there, I didn't think. But if she goes strong to the basket, she initiates that contact, they're going to call the foul. She will draw, yeah. Aaron pass from Crystal. Now Mockerot will go out of the game, and Aubrey Griffin will come in. So Anna so far got a bucket from the floor, but is uh, one for seven shooting today, 0 for five from three. Four rebounds, seven assists in 25 minutes for Makarov. Like we said, the shots will fall. Davis. Got that strong take. Basket for Mia Davis. And a timeout taken by the Huskies with a minute 23 to go and the lead dropping now to 12. Temple's not going to go away. I mean, Ladies UConn is going to have to earn this win. And, and the, the more they hang around, the more dangerous they become. Well, we talked about how cold UConn went shooting from quarter one to quarter two. That's part of the consistency angle that we haven't seen. Here's the other thing for Temple. We talked about that 17-0 run they went on to put away the game uh, against uh, Xavier to get back into it. Bra uh, they broke open what was a two-point game to put that one away. They got back into their game against St. Joe's by going on a 21-8 run Absolutely. in the second quarter. And so they, they have that capability. They have that, that streaky kind of offense, good defense transitioning into offense. And UConn, the more aggressive they are offensively, and their defense was causing offense early in the game. And Temple's done a good job of taking away transition for, for UConn. 6 0 run for Temple. Huskies scoreless in the last two minutes, 45 seconds. Coming down to a minute to go in this third quarter. See if they can get on the board here out of the timeout. It's Walker off the Nelson Adota screen. Back inside, but Nelson Adota couldn't get away from the screen. Williams fighting for the ball, but she will be charged with travel. Well, it was a, I thought it was a really good pass for Megan Walker, but Nelson Adota thought she was going to shoot it. And then, you know, Kristen Williams was there at the right place at the right time, just couldn't convert. Davis, nice roll away from Williams. Mia Davis carrying the Owls on a run. Yeah, big breakdown defensively by UConn. Give Davis credit. So the lead down to 10. Hasn't been 10 in a long time in this ballgame. Griffin, nice touch. Aubrey Griffin. The freshman stopping on a dime. Breaks the scoreless spell for the Huskies. So shot clock off here. 20 seconds to go in quarter number three. She had some good breaks on those shoes, didn't she? <laughs> oh, pass off the feet of Walker. Here's Griffin driving to Crystal Dangerfield. That'll go off the uh, Temple defender Alexander and stay with UConn. 7.9 to go in the quarter. Lucky break for UConn there. I think this is a key bucket. This will do a, a ton for UConn's confidence at a really critical time in the game. There's the Dangerfield directing traffic where she wants Aubrey Griffin to be on the far sideline. Williams off the screen. Good defensive switch for Temple. Two, one. Not going to get a shot off. Good defense and a lack of execution by the Huskies. That shows you the mental difference from where they were at the end of the first quarter when they executed and scored and where they are now. There's the score line. Temple trying to make a little run on the Huskies. Our game reset presented by MGM Springfield. Huskies with the advantage to start the fourth quarter. Kristen Williams has led the way for UConn. Mia Davis has been outstanding for Temple. And before we start the fourth, let's check in with Maria. Thank you, Alan. Well, uh, Coach Gino Oriama told me that he is absolutely looking to get Anna Magarat going more offensively. He's actually surprised at her lack of scoring because she typically is a scorer. Uh, that's what she does. He did say it's a great sign. She had five assists 
in the last game, uh, has seven already today, but he wants the team overall to be putting up around 80 points, which they should. Ivana is scoring 10 to 15. It's not that she's missing. She's just not taking as many shots. Um, she started to do that more today, and she has looked better in practice the last couple days. So uh, he's just hoping that will all carry over sooner than later, Alan. Well, certainly she's got plenty of time on the floor today, and we're seeing progress. And Maria, like I said before, I think once the first one of those long-range ones goes for Makarot, they're going to start to fall in a hurry. Yeah. Huskies only scored 11 points in the third quarter. You know, and is that, is it fatigue? Is it, you know, mental fatigue? That's long. Knocked away from Davis, and it'll be UConn's ball, 20 on the shot clock. Fatigue, and we certainly don't see the energy yeah, that we saw them you know, play with in the first quarter. Which, you know, that's maturity, and they have to fight through, be entire, fight through slumps, but without the energy, they're a different team. So see if the, uh, the roller coaster ride can go back uh, in the right direction. Megan Walker draws a foul, trying to get to the bucket. Really savvy play there by Walker, knowing I, I love when that ball, that kid gets the ball in the low post, faced up, and then just took it because she knew she was going to get fouled. The more times this kid gets to the line, the better. So Owls have now four players with two fouls, including Shante Taylor. One out of two for Megan from the free throw line. Jones gets away from Dangerfield. Shot won't go. Nelson Adota with a strong rebound. Temple doing a good job of getting back. How about that though? What a take. <laughs> Kristen Williams. <laughs> She accelerated. Thirteen and ten for Olivia. Another double double. Good shot from Raniah Walker, freshman from Cheltenham, Maryland. They played her at forward in the game against Xavier. She'd never played it before. She provided the team a big spark there. Hey, you want to do whatever you got to do. Whatever the code, whatever Cardoza asks her to do, she will do it. Olivia. Won't go. Good fight for the rebound underneath by Griffin. That's the kind of play Aubrey Griffin is going to give you. Offensive rebound in traffic. She may not be the first option on the offense right now, but it's this hustle play right here. And getting herself to the line for three-point play, getting whacked in the head a little bit. Tough play by the freshman. Took a, took a little lump. <laughs> Maybe messed up her hair, too. She's trying to fix that. A little bit of everything. Can't get the free throw to go. Walker with the rebound. That was Shante Taylor's third foul for the Owls, by the way. 15-point lead for the Huskies in this fourth quarter. Sandler defended by Williams. Griffin just missed the steal. Wide open shot from the far side is too strong off of Walker. And that's going to go over to UConn off of the out of bounds. Time for the drive of the game presented by Nissan. How about Kristen Williams putting it in high gear? Well, and started with a tremendous rebound from Nelson Adota. But I like that pedal to the metal at the end to get herself to the rim. We've got some racing references in there. there High gear, go. pedal to the metal. You, I feel right at home. <laughs> Preston Williams. I mean, when's the last time you saw an aggressive take like that, other than her fast break? Off that timeout, energy That's again. It. Yeah, think, absolutely. Think that was the message in the huddle? I, what do you What do you think, right? Nelson Adota. Came back down, that's why no foul call. Knocked away as they tried to get the ball into the paint to Taylor. Here comes Griffin. Gonna take it all the way and draw the foul. Freshman making it happen. I mean, how about this? The nice screen 
and then reading the defense, spinning off the defender, and then kisses it off the glass. Kristen up to 19 points on 8 of 12 shooting. Three rebounds. And one steal. So Aubrey Griffin, 19 minutes against Cal, 18 minutes against Vandy, up to 10 minutes in this ball game. Off the mark on the second. Griffin with nine points, three of four from the floor, three of five from the free throw lane. Into traffic, too strong from Taylor. When I mentioned earlier that I thought Griffin, Griffin could really make an impact in this game, she's in there now, she, she matches up well with the Temple players, and you see her grabbing rebounds, stealing the basketball, making things happen. Walker, Griffin, to Nelson Adota, to the scoreboard. And Gino R.M. has got to be happy with the offense and the energy, as you indicated. But see, Nelson Adota is better from the free throw line versus 19 feet. Just stay at that free throw line. Timeout Temple, six and a half to go. UConn's lead back up to 20. After the ball with both hands. And she paid the price for it. Aubrey Griffin drawing the foul. That is her first. Nice anticipation. All the way to the bucket and the foul. Crystal Dangerfield, who started off the game red hot from beyond the arc, running the floor there for the Huskies. And it all started with her anticipation on the defensive end to steal the inbound pass. Sloppy pass, but a smart play and then good focus and finish. Back to the point you made earlier about Nelson Adota. Crystal went to the rim and drew the foul. Yeah, you can't be fading away. And finishes off the three-point play to open up the gap to 23 for the Huskies. A 10-0 run for UConn in this last two minutes and 42 seconds. We've seen it so much over the years. This team will just clamp down defensively and go on runs. Going to be UConn's ball. Good hands on defense. I think that was Megan that got the first knockaway. Got the ball, not the body. And then it was knocked off of Temple. And UConn has the turnover. Gino calling out a play. Another area where we can measure progress on this team. We're talking about the one at the end of the first half. Megan Walker will draw a foul. As Marissa Mackin got in her way as she tried to bring the ball up. I saw Gino talking to her during the timeout. And, and she was isolated. And there was a little bit of contact there. This is why she's at the line. It's been a physical game. Yep. Correct myself, that uh, was Mia Davis who picked up the foul. It's her third. Everybody in a mini huddle here while Megan shoots the free throws. <laughs> All right, so obviously UConn says, Megan, you're going to make this, right? Because we're not even going to go in there and rebound. Not a problem. Drop it through. It's all good. 71% free throw shooter. They was just, he was just playing the analytics there. <laughs> Jones. Blocked by Nelson Adota. Out of bounds. Off Temple. UConn ball. That'll be the fifth block of the ball game for Nelson Adota. Just always knows where the ball is. And here comes Kyla Irwin into the ball game, much to the delight of her cheering section in her home state of Pennsylvania. This has to be the biggest cheering section for a kid I have ever seen. That's terrific, isn't it? Imagine if she scores. You can be assured they'll find some way to try and get her a shot. She's not even looking for it. <laughs> Walker had it knocked away. It's going to go off of her knee and over to Temple. Uh, Olivia Nelson Adota exits the game. You would assume done for the day. 35 minutes, 
5 of 13 from the floor, 15 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, 5 blocks, and only 1 foul. She put in some work here yes. today. Must be the promise of a cheesesteak after the game. You think that's what it is? <laughs> You're a Philly girl. It worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> Walker, too strong for three. That'll go over everything and be turned over to the Owls. Kyla Irwin, the senior from State College, Pennsylvania. Her 94th game played for UConn. Got her third career start in the opener last Sunday against Cal. She get a bucket here and really send the noise level up in this place. You know her parents? Bethany and Rob, great, great fans. They're in every game. There's the pick and roll. <laughs> Perfect. Her dad's like, come on, act like you've been there. He's just sitting there clapping. <laughs> be cool, be cool. That's right. That's what dads do. Us moms don't do that. <laughs> Kristen steals the errant pass. Crystal will feed Megan Walker, who's running all alone to the rim. Timeout Temple. UConn's lead grows to 26 points. A 21-5 run in the last seven and a half minutes for the Huskies. And back to that pattern again. I'm sure it's going to be one of the things that Chino will be will be thinking about. Maybe not tonight, because he's going to the Eagles-Patriots game <laughs> after he's done here. But tomorrow, inconsistency. First quarter, fourth quarter. Phenomenal today. Huskies. Second quarter, third quarter. The new normal, maybe, right? I mean, I think that's what this year will be. And that's what you expect early in the season, the ups and the downs as they try to figure it out, figure each other out, work through the fatigue. Because as we mentioned, you know, how many players, have they, they bring two players off the bench, but you know, that core four, they're playing 37 to 40 minutes a game. Yeah. They gotta get into game shape. Which we haven't discussed yet, the Avina Westbrooks, Appeal denied. We've heard from all quarters uh, throughout the week from uh, Tennessee's athletic director, former coach, current coach, to the UConn athletic director. Uh, of course, Gino's had his say about it. Bottom line is, Avina Westbrook will not play this year. She'll have two years of eligibility remaining for the Huskies and uh, we'll have some extra time on the positive side to get well completely. Yeah, you know, she did have knee surgery, and she's not 100%. Will, would she have helped this team this year? Without question. But you know, I always try to look at the glass as half full, and maybe it's better off she's going to have two full, healthy seasons. Maria? Thank you, Alan. Well, I talked to Crystal Dangerfield before the game about Avina because they are very close, and she said that before the decision was made, the team was really approaching everything as if she'd be granted that waiver to play. They were shocked when she was denied, and Crystal says they want to understand why even though it's not their jobs. Well, at the risk of sounding flippant, understanding why is probably something that won't ever become completely clear to all of us. <laughs> True. And you know what Gino's really good about? Just dealing with the, the team that he has in front of him. And you don't have her, so you can't think about it. You got, That's it. You got the season to, to, to play and play together, play with who you have, and, and that's all you can focus on. A little Belichick line there from you. There you go. Players that are here will play. <laughs> I'm not wearing a hoodie. Right? Yeah, yeah. Change. Mackin's too strong from the corner. Ball's going to go off of Kyla Irwin as she tried to grab the rebound. And it'll stay with Temple. 2.22 to go in the ball game. And uh, 20 seconds on the clock. Yeah, Gino, uh, he mentioned last Sunday to me uh, when we were talking during the morning shoot-around that he was uh, looking forward to going to see the Eagles-Patriots game. I think in my mind I was thinking of saying to him, you mean Patriots-Eagles, being a <laughs> Rhode Island guy and a New England guy, but I didn't bring that up knowing he's a Philadelphia <laughs> through and through guy. Smart. Although he's a huge Patriots fan. with Bel he, he loves Bill Belichick. So. Sure. can see why. Oh, 
<laughs> she's, Fabulous. And she's trying to keep her game face and not look at the crowd. So great to see for the senior. Minute and a half to go. 28 point Husky lead. High glass. Nice shot from Marissa Mackins. Timeout called. Substitution timeout. Crystal Dangerfield, Megan Walker will head out of the game. We will see Molly Bent for the second time today. And Evelyn Adebayo will come into the game for the Huskies. And, and UConn's going to need Adebayo to, to progress and, and be a good body off the bench. Evelyn, the fifth-year senior, was transferring into the program on the, the graduate transfer the graduate transfer year, or exception, however you want to phrase that. Kaya! <laughs> <laughs> you know what all of her, fans, her family and friends are going to say? Well, why doesn't she play more? Uh -huh. <laughs> What was it you said earlier? Nothing like a little home cooking? That's right. Mia Davis will get fouled, trying to get through and cut into the lane. Molly Gino Bent might be asking himself that same question right now. Maybe well, I should put her out there more. Now, a lot to talk about on our People's United post-game show. Gary and Kara at the studio. A lot to digest about this one and look ahead to the Huskies uh, in Hartford against uh, Virginia. And these are those coaching moments that Gino has, you know, he's doing this year, and this is the kind of stuff he loves. But you see him talking to the kids on the bench. This is where, this is where they're going to learn. This is where they're going to develop more. And, and I, I am, was so impressed with, the game was, what, 12 or 10? And, and UConn put the, the pedal to the metal, and, and it was an impressive effort, both the defense into offense. And I think they learned a lot here today. Came out with great energy, if you weren't with us, for the start of the game, Autobio. Got it. Nice pass from uh, Bent. Yeah, if this was hockey, Irwin would have gotten an assist, too. <laughs> Irwin to Bent to Autobio. If this was hockey, we'd be wearing coats <laughs> exactly. right now. Well, final seconds will run out as Kristen Williams runs. And she'll pull it back and seal the final margin. Huskies stay undefeated in the American and stay undefeated in this young season yet. The fourth-ranked team in the nation beating the Temple Owls 83-54. to Another Super Sunday for the Huskies here on SNY. To the and delight of the Irwin family, <laughs> Kyla came in, hit a couple threes, had a, a field goal from the floor. Seven points in five minutes. That's, that's some productive minutes for sure. And today's player of the game presented by People's United Bank. Who else could it be but Olivia Nelson Adota? What a great line today. Tremendous energy, tremendous effort from Nelson Adota, and a very deserving of our player of the game nod. Maria is with Gino. Thank you, Alan. Coach, congrats on the win. Do you feel like today was a breakthrough in terms of offensive flow? It certainly was uh, a lot better than it was the first two games. Uh, you know, we really got a lot of good movement. We had a stretch there in the third quarter where uh, it wasn't so great. But uh, I thought for the most part, you know, we got everybody involved. And uh, the kids had fun playing, you know. They were playing together and playing off each other. Uh, so let's hope this is the start of something. Olivia Nelson Adota contributed in so many ways. What are you seeing from her? Well, when I said that Liv was going to be really, really important, I mean, she has to score in the lane. She has to rebound the ball. She has to block shots. Uh, today, she did all those things. You know, she was a real presence. And, and then if she can make a couple 15-footers, then that just changes everything for us. How about the contributions from your freshmen today? Well, you know, uh, Anna's still 0 for, 0 for America. She still hasn't made a shot since she's been in America. But... Um, She's passing the ball really well, and, and, and Aubrey was just, what can you say? I mean, uh, the kid just has a, she just has a mentality, you know, that you can't teach, and uh, 
uh, I, I was I was really thrilled for, for both of them, and um, I hope it hope it's a start of something. Uh, talk about having fun real quick. You happy for Kyla? Yeah, you know, um, being home and, you know, having a lot of her friends and family here uh, and then making a couple buckets, uh, that's just a great way, you know, a great way for her to end the weekend. Thanks a lot, Coach. You're welcome. Back to you, Alan. All right, Maria, thanks. Don't go away. Lots more still to come, both from here in Philadelphia and in the studio. Gary Apple and Kara Walter standing by for a full recap of today's game. We'll have Gino's post-game news conference as well. It's the UConn Women's Basketball Post-Game Show presented by People's United Bank coming right up. Well, first and fourth quarter, certainly the highlights of this one for the Huskies. And that score, well, that's a pretty good-looking one, too. 83 for UConn.